Chapter 4 of The Prince by Nicola Machiavelli, titled Conquered by Alexander the Great, the kingdom of Darius did not rebel against his successors after his death. Why not? Well, let's break it down. Let's break down how Alexander the Great was able to maintain that state of land after his death. How was he able to do that? Well, this is how we did it. We would think that Alexander the Great conquered land. He conquered something that was not his. And that's cool. He has a state of land. But he passes away. He dies. He moves forward to the next dimension. What happens now? Well, that land is still owned by him, but it's no longer his because he's not alive. So how would they really stay with him? How would they stay loyal to his beliefs, his land? Alexander the Great had a lot of control over the Persian Empire that he conquered. What Alexander the Great really did, his strategy was to, was to take that Persian culture and really implement it into his own rule. To not devour that culture, that pre-existing culture, but to take that culture and implement it into the way that he's going to rule the country. Now, this approach helped him score the loyalty and he conquered people and prevented them from rebelling against the successors after his death. Because the way that he looked at it, he was able to take what they believed in, what they pre-existingly believed in, and he was able to implement that into his own ruling. They would follow it, maybe not blindly in a sense, but they would follow it nicely enough that he wouldn't have to make too many changes to his overall ruling because he already has that support. Like the Persian Empire, let's say they love doing this, this, and that. And he implements that into the law. Now, it's in the law, and they will support him because what they really crave, what they really desire is allowed. It's allowed in that culture. It's allowed in that legislation. It's allowed in that state of land. That's what he did. It's a smart way to think. It's a smart way to think because if there's, let's say there's a person, let's say there's a situation at hand where you want to gain that control. You want to get that person to help you. You want to get that person's support on your side. You offer them this little piece. You offer them that thing that they really want. You offer them this, this, and that. What they want. You know what they want because you know who that person is, okay? You examine what they want. You know what they want. Bang, that's good. Okay, cool. But now you know that the only way, well, you don't know this, but Alexander the Great and Niccolo Machiavelli claim that the only way to get them on your side, to get them to support you, is by you giving that to them in the thing that you want. I've went over different examples of this, but if we want a little example, it's kind of like getting somebody to do a job for you, but within that job, you're providing them the benefits that they claim, that they really want. Like let's say in the work life, people want the $25 wage, you know? You're giving them that $25 wage, but you're not giving them weekends off. It's kind of like you're flipping in a type of way. And I know that's not the best example, but that's the first example that does come to my mind. So in that sense, it's really important to adapt those local customs and those local traditions and those way of thinking that those people have previously had, not the full way of thinking, but partial ways of thinking that you believe is very beneficial and very comforting and to home, to home to them. And you want to rule that conquered territory with such. He also claims Alexander the Great, when he took over this Persian empire, really took in, he established a long and strong presence in this acquired territory. And that's something you must do. And the ways to do that are not in this book. It gives you the overall outlook to look like, okay, this is what must be done. It doesn't give you the, this is how you're going to do it. It does give you the way that Alexander the Great did it. So in your own situation in life, you must examine that situation. You must see how you're going to convert whatever situation is at hand. And you can even take situations and view them as such and see that what is at hand can be flipped. It can be flipped. That's not the overall outlook of this chapter, but they can be flipped. So overall, chapter four really goes into when you take over a conquered land, how to convert it into your liking, how to convert it into your favor, how to convert it into what you need and what you claim, but even keeping them in your land and keeping them loyal to who you are even after you have long passed. That's what's saying.